So now we're doing 3.2, use parallel lines and transversals. So this is the back side of your 3.1 uh, notes. So our objective here is I can use angles formed by parallel lines and transversals. Let me see if I can get a little bit closer. All right. Uh, that's good enough. I'll mark this so I don't go too hard. Okay. So I can use angles uh, formed by parallel lines and transversal. So again, we have our our lines that are beside each other, but in this case we're saying that they're parallel. So that's going to be real important and really helpful. If we know those guys are parallel, then all, all kinds of things uh, open up uh, for us and make it easier uh, for us. So here's your parallel lines and also you have your uh, transversal uh, across it. So corresponding, corresponding angles uh, postulate. So if two parallel lines are cut by a transversal, then the pairs of corresponding angles are congruent. So again, when we look at this diagram, first thing I want to do is identify which is the transversal. So here's my transversal that cuts across these two lines at two separate places. And now corresponding. So let's start with, uh, let's say angle three. So what is the position of angle three in reference to this uh, intersection? It's the bottom left. So now what angle corresponds to uh, angle three in, in this intersection? Well, in this intersection, the bottom left is uh, angle seven. So angle three and angle seven are corresponding uh, to one another. And what this postulate is saying is that if, and if you would, make sure you label on your, your diagram. Uh, this is line P, so that's a lowercase italics uh, P. And this is line S, again, lowercase italics. So if uh, P, line P, is parallel to line S, then uh, all the corresponding angles are going to be congruent uh, to each other. <clears throat> So like I was saying, uh, angles three and seven would be or are congruent to each other. Or as I've written here, uh, angle one, which is up in the top left, is congruent. Remember the symbol for congruent, equal sign with a squiggle on top of it, is congruent to uh, angle five. Okay, so again, that's only if, it's not saying all corresponding angles are congruent, but uh, uh, corresponding angles are congruent if these two lines are what? Are parallel. That's the main point. They have to be parallel. In fact, let's go ahead and, and underline parallel there just to emphasize that. And that's going to be the case for all, uh, all four of these different uh, circumstances. So alternate interior angles. Let's look at that now. They're saying if two parallel lines are cut by a transversal, then the pairs of alternate interior angles are also uh, congruent. So again, here's your transversal, alternate. You're going to be on alternate sides of the transversal. Interior, you're going to be inside of these two lines that are between each other. And so alternate interior would be like angles four and five. And we're told that if lines P and S are parallel, then what's true about uh, angles four and five? They're going to be congruent. Or you could even say it the other way around. We're going to look at that later. The converse of that is also true. Remember converse? You're thinking of a guy wearing sneakers, his converse sneakers, and he has them switched. Uh, so the opposite of this is also true, uh, this conditional statement, that uh, if uh, angle three is congruent to angle six, for example, these guys are alternate interior, uh, then um, line P is parallel to line uh, S. So in this particular case, the converse is also true. Alternate exterior angles, again, they'll be like uh, angles uh, two and seven, 
and angles uh, 1 and 8. Those are alternate exterior. And so if lines P and S are parallel, then these alternate exterior angles are going to be uh, congruent. And the last one, uh, consecutive interior, would be like angles uh, 3 and 5, and angles uh, 4 and 6. Those are consecutive interior angles. And so if these two lines are parallel, does it mean that these consecutive interior angles are congruent? I mean, that's what we've been saying so far. If you want to underline with uh, co corresponding angles, they're going to be congruent. With alternate interior angles, they're going to be congruent. With alternate exterior angles, they're going to be congruent. But when we come down here to consecutive interior angles, uh, they're saying supplementary. So angles 3 and 5, for example, are not congruent. They could be congruent, but we're not guaranteed they're congruent. Um, but we are guaranteed that they are uh, supplementary. So uh, consecutive interior or same side interior angles, when, only when these two lines are parallel, these consecutive interior angles will be uh, con uh, supplementary. And of course you remember supplementary uh, means that the sum of those two angles equals 180. So a way of writing that would be that uh, if uh, line P is parallel to line S, then, make sure that you spell then correctly with an N, then the measure of angle 3, here's a measure of angle 3, uh, plus the measure of angle 5 uh, equals 180. So these two guys are supplementary. Because you'll remember that they do, they do not have to be beside each other. Yes, angles 1 and 3 are supplementary, but angles 3 and 5 are also supplementary. Only when these two lines are what? When these two lines are, are parallel. Again, it's only when, there's, when they're parallel with each other. All right, let's go back to the book. Let's do some examples. So look at example one in your book on page 146. Get this a little bit clear. All right, it's not really clear. You gonna wake up for me? It's still too close. Okay, so if uh, if this angle here is 120 degrees, let's see. Well, first of all, uh, which line is the transversal? Which of these three lines is the transversal? And it's this one, the one running horizontal. That's your transversal. And so let's, uh, remember we, we talked about before about uh, corresponding uh, angles, postulates. So let's look at uh, uh, corresponding angles. So what angle is corresponding to the angle that's 120 degrees? And that would be uh, angle five. Angle five is corresponding because this guy is in the top left position and angle five is also in the top left <coughs> position. So now, are we saying then that uh, these, that all corresponding angles <coughs> are congruent? No, that's not what this, uh, well, what was it, postulate? It's not what the postulate said. It's only if they are two parallel lines that are being cut by a transversal. So we have to go back and look at these two lines. Are these two lines parallel? They look parallel, but do we know that they're parallel? Uh, in fact, we do, because we have these little arrows uh, here. So because we have those two arrows, that means these two lines are parallel, and therefore corresponding angles are congruent, and therefore what is the measure of angle 5? It would be 120, 120 degrees. In fact, let's go ahead and do all the rest of them, the other ones here. Uh, let's see, what was the second one? <clears throat> Alternate uh, interior angles. So, let's see. Now, this 120, is that an interior angle or is that an exterior angle? And that's an exterior, yeah, because here's your, your two lines are between each other, so uh, 120 is on the exterior. Uh, but we could do um, alternate 
exterior angles. So what angle is an alternate exterior uh, with this angle 120 degrees? And it would be angle 8. So these guys are alternate exterior angles. So are all alternate exterior angles congruent? Uh, no, uh, but they are congruent if these two lines are parallel. And these two lines are parallel, therefore alternate exterior angles are congruent and therefore the measure of angle 8 is 120 degrees. What else could we do? Hey, what's the, uh, the, me what's the relationship between angles, the angle 120 and angle 4? These two angles are vertical and all vertical angles are congruent. So what's the measure of angle 4? It's 120 degrees. Okay. And then, remember we looked at uh, consecutive interior angles. So what would be a consecutive interior angle with angle 4? It would be angle 7, right? Because it's a consecutive or same side interior. And so are we saying then, since angle 4 is 120, is angle 7 120 also? No, no. Go back to your, your notes there again. And... Uh,